Many in the medical aid fraternity remain pessimistic about the feasibility of the proposed national health insurance. The NHI bill, which was passed in Parliament yesterday, aims to provide universal public health care and narrow the inequality gap in health profession. But not everyone agrees. We are now joined by Craig Comrie from ProfMed, the CEO. Craig, thanks for taking us. For starters, I see you are doubtful that this, will bring, uh, that this bill will bring any improvements to the overall healthcare system. What, why is that? Yeah, I think you have to, um, good evening and uh, thank you for having me. I think you have to look at the details of the bill and then consider some of the, the missing elements of the bill as well. So absolutely, we need to do better for the South African citizens in terms of, of health care in general. And so the bill, in terms of its intention, is correct in terms of improving access to health care. However, when you look at the details, what it quickly does is it looks like effectively um, a nationalization of medical scheme premiums. And we think that agenda is incorrect. We think that if you are going to push a national objective of improving health care in general, you need to work alongside the medical schemes that already provide significant value to just over 9 million lives in the country. So we realize that there is an inequity in terms of, of uh, the different funding that exists. However, we think there's a, there's a way to work together in terms of accomplishing the national objectives of improved health. Um, and so to relegate medical schemes and even to relegate to those who perhaps pay for um, health care services out of their pocket and force them into a very uh, draconian and monopolized um, funding mechanism called national health is something that we absolutely disagree with. And so we need to actually work a little bit closer together. And some parts of the bill need to change in terms of addressing that. Craig, as Prof Med, you make many benefits available to your client, clients, and you believe that those benefits will be limited quite significantly under the NHI. What, what are those benefits? Well, I think that's the really good question. What we haven't seen as part of the bill is a description of what benefits will be covered. Um, and so what you're missing is the benefits and then the pricing that goes behind those benefits. And every funder in the marketplace has realizes that without that, you really don't know where to start. And so from the essence of the bill, the, um, the philosophy is correct to improve health care. But when it comes to the benefits that are included, we, we haven't heard what those benefits are. And we haven't had clear indications of how much this may cost. Um, at the moment, we, we're waiting the money bill that's supposed to accompany this type of bill. And I think once we start seeing that arise, we'll start understanding um, the details. But effectively, um, the thinking is, and what has been said, is that the medical scheme premiums will become effectively a tax um, on those that currently pay those, those medical uh, premiums. Um, if you are going to fund an NHI, which is probably three times the size of the funding that Eskom requires every year, you are looking at a centralized um, monopoly of the healthcare funds that then get designated to different, whether it is public or private uh, facilities to actually provide those services. And so our point of view from a ProfMed perspective is that people cannot afford those increased taxes at the moment. South Africa has one of the highest tax rates for personal income uh, tax uh, across the whole of the continent. And so any increase is going to really uh, spell trouble for, for people already in trouble in terms of the pressures we've seen in the economy, in terms of inflation rates and other, and other items. One we of can... the other real pressure points that we see coming through is the fact that we are losing healthcare workers quite quickly. There are a lot of developed mar markets that are targeting our healthcare workers. Uh, and so we don't have a retention plan to actually keep our very highly skilled medical doctors and specialists and even nurses in the country to service what is envisaged as national health insurance. Craig, what do you make of Discovery's reaction to the bill? It says there's no need to panic because the full implementation is expected to take between 10 and 15 years. So I think in our, in our own minds, we feel that 10 or 15 years might even be ambitious in terms of implementation. But we do need to see some of the reforms starting to come through, some of the improvements that are promised in the public sector service provision um, certainly has to happen. Uh, so we agree that it's going to take uh, 
in my mind, a lot longer than those 10 or 15 years. And it really relies on the economic stability of the country and even the growth prospects of the country before a bill like this can even uh, be financed. And so we may see small movements. We certainly will see the bill being adopted and it has been adopted in Parliament, but it goes through another stage of, uh, of review in terms of the National Council of Provinces. And, uh, and there's the final sign-off by the president that still hasn't taken place. And so there is still, there is still time to consult, to engage, hopefully to influence and change the final direction of the bill. What do you say to the argument that an NHI would provide benefits at fair prices to both patients and practitioners? The health department says currently the private sector pays 30 times more for provisions than the public sector because of its smaller economies of scale. Yeah, it's often not, not a statement many people stand up to, but I think we need to put it clearly. Um, the healthcare in the private sector has been expensive. It's due to the lack of resources and available resources in the healthcare sector, often driven by, um, by new health technology that comes on board. And that's not odd only in a South African context, but a worldwide context. In the public sector, I think what you don't see is the escalating costs, but you do see the growing queues and the growing um, failures of the public sector health provision. And so the two need to be um, considered in, in, in that space. Our expensive private medical scheme space is partially there because we have to have some additional regulationary or regulatory changes happen. And those changes have almost been disregarded in favour of just driving this national health bill. So let's get back to the funding. I know you've mentioned it before. So some commentators do mention that our tax, tax base is merely not big enough to foot the bill. Where is the money going to come from? Not necessarily tomorrow, not like in 10, 15 years, but where will this money come from? Well, effectively, you cannot just annex the, the, the premiums paid to medical schemes. So the money has to come in a form of taxes. Now, you might couch that in a view of saying that the taxes will come from a payroll levy. Um, but in the end, it is an actual tax. So if you're thinking of moving what is just over 250 billion rand out of the medical scheme premiums, plus another 50 billion that people pay out of pocket, you have to be thinking of increasing taxes. And at the marginal tax rates that we see, where um, the, the personal income tax uh, really hits a very small group of, of taxpayers, about just over five and a half million people in the country. These are in actual fact the same people that belong to medical schemes. And so what you have is the full national health budget being paid by a very small group of, of taxpayers. And the pressures are high on that tax base at the moment. And it has been shrinking specifically in the higher, the higher income earners because we cannot think that we only are attracting or keeping professionals and highly skilled people here when the global economy is trying to draw them out as well. Like you just said now um, about losing our professionals and specifically our health professionals to other countries. Um, this is already a reality now. Do you think this will increase over the next few years? Well, I, I saw earlier on on your channel as well, the Sama guys also came through and, and expressed a view and they represent many of the doctors and specialists. And so it's very clear that in their research and some of the research done by uh, the likes of the Professional Providence Society as well, there is a very real reason to leave this country and look at the global opportunities because of things like NHI. Thank you so much for your time, Craig. That was Craig Comrie, ProfMed CEO.